All right, guys, today we're lifting jets with cranes. We've got two cranes on either side of this aircraft. So we've got this crane on this side that's gonna be connected underneath with a big cradle to this crane over here that they're gonna position into place there. So this is gonna be an operation and we're gonna be doing this with a couple different jets today. So let's watch how they do it. And we'll be talking through the different steps that the cranes are gonna be doing to make this actually happen without dropping a jet. Don't wanna drop a jet, that's a bad day. So just check out the precision they're using to operate these cranes with. I mean, it looks like he's about to hit the wing. He's just slightly above it. So the hook is gonna skim right across the top of the wing. And then he starts pulling the cable up as he gets closer to the fuselage in order to not smack right into the fuselage and basically just glide over top of it like he's done this a thousand times before. And that's not the case. This isn't your average job that they teach you in crane school. Yeah, crane school, I'm pretty sure that's a thing. These guys had such skills with maneuvering these things. The way that they operated it was really cool because they were just making it happen. They were being athletes. And now look at how they have this tandem set up on each side. That's just a thing of beauty. So hats off to crane school. <laughs> so what stands out to me, and it's crazy loud in here, obviously we've got heavy equipment for these two cranes. What stands out to me though, is just the precision it's gonna take from these heavy equipment operators to get that sling under the jet, lift it up, and carry it out without scraping anything or without dropping it. And they're gonna have to get it set down precisely so that it doesn't scrape any of the parts underneath the aircraft. Because if this thing comes down a little bit to one side or another, it's not gonna be a good day. So the precision of this is pretty epic. So the heavy equipment machinery, the cranes are braced with what we see here. Just kind of like what you would have on an RV, right? You got a fifth wheel RV, you got to brace it, same thing. <laughs> same size, no, just kidding. So here we got the crane, we got the cables that are gonna be slung underneath it. So you're gonna have one for the back and one for the front. And the key again is just setting this thing down gently. This is a massive aircraft. This is like one of the F-100 series aircraft, just legacy aircraft that were massive. And on a side note, as a fighter pilot, these are the type of aircraft that I'm glad they didn't continue to build because the turning radius on these things is just terrible. The way that it's built is as an interdiction aircraft to get low, go fast, and drop weapons. But as a dogfighting aircraft, it's terrible just due to the way that it would bleed off energy. So this jet was the precursor to like the F-15 and F-16. And this whole series, like the F-10, everything from the F-100 to the F-106 are aircraft that you would not want to be found dogfighting in. And that's why the F-15, the F-16 were adaptations of these to actually be, be good at dogfighting. Because a lot of pilots lost dogfights in these, especially in Vietnam, due to the fact that these jets just do not turn well. You get maybe one big turn, it bleeds off energy, but your turn circle is gonna be massive. So getting this thing into a dogfight would not have been a good uh, thing to be in back in the day. But that's just a side note. Let's get back, focus Ryan, focus. Let's get back to actually moving this thing and getting it out of here. I'm pretty sure they uh, lift whales out of the ocean the same way. They put these slings underneath them, so it's kind of like we're moving a whale. I think it's the same thing. Pretty sure you have to be certified by the same company in order to move a whale or move an, air an aircraft like this. So just taking a peek at the F-105 itself, let's look at it from a design element perspective. It's got really tiny little wings and a massive fuselage. And there's a reason for that. It was built as a deep strike interdiction aircraft, which is just a fancy way of saying it was meant to carry a nuclear weapon internally, go super fast, really low, and do a strike into Russia during the Cold War. So coming up on the top of this thing, you can really just get a feel for the design of it being a super slick, fast aircraft craft to go Mach 2. That was the top speed of this thing, even maybe a little faster than that. There's the aerial refueling port there. Uh, really nice that it's in front of the pilot. And then you can see the cannon right there as we scan past it. But using that cannon really in this jet was not a strategic use of this aircraft at all. You try to strafe the ground with this or you get into a turning dogfight with MiGs and you're gonna get shot down a lot of the times. And that's why it got the nickname, the thud, because it would go thud a lot of times if it tried to get into a dogfight because it just didn't have the ability to turn and burn with the smaller 
MiGs that it was fighting in Vietnam. It was in the 50s and 60s that this jet actually had its heyday. And then after that, it kind of started to get phased out by the F-4 and the F-111. Now, obviously a very capable deep strike aircraft, but when you try to start dogfighting with it, you're just putting yourself in a huge disadvantage. It's like tying your arm behind your back and trying to get in a fist fight. It's not built for that. All right, so we got a little snag in lifting the jets up. The harness underneath is a little bit too big, so the top of the crane might actually impact the roof, which would be a bad day. So the big thing is just making sure that they got clearance for that so that they don't scrape the roof. All right, so we got a solution. We got a new sling, and now we're putting this red sling around the top of this. So hopefully this holds. It's a pretty thin red string, but I've got faith. I've got faith. It's going to work for sure. So this one's going to go around the front, and hopefully it's going to give this crane the ability to extend more so that the top of the crane doesn't hit the ceiling as it's lifting up the jet. And then we got to do the same to the back. So it's process, and you, this is one you want to get right for sure before you start lifting, you know, 60,000 pound aircraft. All right, so the team behind me is lifting this F-105 off the ground, making it hover for the first time in a while, and then they're gonna slowly lower it down. So like we talked about before, we got the cable in the front, we're gonna have one in the back as well. They went with a thinner one that is a little shorter, so they're not gonna hit the ceiling up here with the front one. So now we're gonna see what they're gonna do with the back one. The key is just stability, right? If one of these starts to slip, or if too much weight is on one or the other, then this jet goes ka -chunk, and that's not gonna be a good day for anyone. So let's take a little peek underneath this, look at the fuselage, where this thing's gonna be connected to. And now we can just get a nice shot of those wing root inlets. I mean, just a thing of beauty, so different from what you see on most jets. That allowed to save room for the intake not having to be in the nose so you could put a decent radar for the time in there. And of note, this F-105, the single seat platform, is the largest single seat fighter ever built. And that's for that deep strike interdiction, go low, go fast. And here you've got what looks like a 2,000 pound laser guided weapon, 500 pound laser guided weapon. We've got the strap underneath, so now it's time to tighten that bad boy up and go from there. So when you look at this aircraft, you can just tell that it was built for speed and not for turning due to how small the wing size is on this thing. Now, back to the operation at hand here. They're getting this strap around the bottom, but we're looking at what's going to be basically a snag because this loop, the strap loop, is a little bit too big, and that's going to present a problem that we're going to get into right now. And the crane's touching the top. They're touching the roof touching the installation so it's not doing any damage, but you can't lift it up any higher than that. So while they get that figured out with the strap, check out this team moving these laser guided bombs. There goes a 500 pounder, no big deal. Got to get the bombs out of the way if we're going to drop the jet down. But this was really cool, just watching them work together as a team. Now you got the 2,000-pounder that they're maneuvering around. And that thing is just massive. I'm, I mean, I believe it's a 2,000-pounder. That might be 5,000 pounds. Let me know in the comments below. Just a really cool thing to see, though. All right, so the jets are all hooked up. We got the front section supported, back section supported. Bombs are out of the way. Here we go. So when it comes to moving heavy jets like that, I just have a special place in my heart for the heavy equipment operators that are doing it because as a fighter pilot or any type of jet pilot, you are essentially a heavy equipment operator. So you're kind of using some of the same skills, some of the same spatial awareness that those guys were using as they're operating those cranes. So if you're a guy or gal flying an aircraft, your brain is focused on moving that aircraft through space just like they were focused on picking that aircraft up and setting it down. 
Very gently. So it's a little loud because the cranes are operating right behind me, but that's how you lower a 50,000 pound aircraft. The F-105 just came down and now it's ready to be towed. When it started swinging there for a second, I was like, uh, how's this gonna go? But they're pros, they made it happen, I'm not surprised. So more to come. Thanks for watching guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Click on another one of these videos that's gonna pop up right here. A lot of awesome stuff. We got SR-71 videos, F-117 videos. Got you covered. Thanks, most of all, have a great day.